Hey, Lon Seibin here, back again for a product review. I'll tell you what, I really love everything that Blackmagic Design puts out, and they are a company that develops uh, video hardware for uh, people at, I guess, at all levels of television production, but they really do have a lot of great options for independent producers looking to try to do their own stuff, and you can really very inexpensively cobble together uh, what essentially is a working television studio uh, for, for well under $5,000. In fact, you could probably get something working for less than $1,500 uh, thanks to a lot of the products that they come out with. And uh, this, this week we're taking a look at the Blackmagic Design HyperDeck Shuttle 2. And uh, this has become a real essential part of my workflow because I, I crank out a lot of these product reviews, or at least I'm trying to, and I've often struggled with uh, getting all of the, the footage edited and put up uh, as quickly as I'd like to get it put up. Uh, and this thing really helps with that. And what it does is it records video directly from the switcher that I'm using, which is a Blackmagic Design ATEM television studio, which is only about a thousand bucks. Uh, it records onto these uh, solid state drives that you might use in your desktop computer or your laptop computer. Uh, they are incredibly fast and it records it uncompressed, meaning that you get exactly what the switcher and essentially what the camera is seeing without any kind of compression. Now you can put some compression on it and I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, but by and large, you know, what you get out of this, uh, whatever device you've hooked up to it, uh, is what you're going to get recorded. And that has tremendous value for a lot of things, especially chroma keying. And you can see I'm having some lighting trouble still. <laughs> uh, we're doing it in real time here. But uh, for chroma keying and special effects work and all sorts of stuff that you might need a higher quality recording than what your camera can produce. And a lot of cameras allow you to bypass all of their internal circuitry uh, for compression and just dump whatever that chip is seeing over the HDMI port to disk. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably don't need it. <laughs> um, but uh, for what I do, it's really been helpful. And one of the things that this recorder lets me do is uh, record directly onto a disk that I can then import into Final Cut Pro. And I don't need to do any kind of uh, reconversion or wait for the computer to do any processing on the video. I can work on it immediately. And the drive has uh, options to do just straight QuickTime uncompressed video, which is a huge file. Uh, I can do ProRes 422, which is what Final Cut likes to edit with. And it, it records in the HQ format, which is the highest uh, version they have. And it also um, supports uh, Avid uh, direct formats as well. So uh, if you're on Mac or Windows, it can pretty much do all that. And there is a caveat for Windows people, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but let's take a look here briefly at the front of the unit. Um, it's made out of aluminum. It's a really solid block. Um, really well built and it's designed to be portable. In fact, uh, it has a battery, which uh, you can see the battery indicator here. Um, when it's plugged in, it'll charge the battery, but um, otherwise you can uh, use it out in the field without any um, AC power, which is a real uh, great thing to have. It, it does have a mounting bracket that's optional that'll attach it to a tripod or the bottom of a camera. So even uh, inexpensive consumer cameras can attach to it. Um, the next light over here is the SSD. Uh, the video light lights up when you have an HDMI source plugged in. Uh, there's a power button. Uh, this button here is DISP, which it doesn't actually work yet, but they uh, will eventually make it work in a future firmware update. And that's one thing that Blackmagic has done a really great job with is updating their products to add new features after they've been released. So, for example, the switcher I'm using initially didn't have the ability uh, to grab audio off a camera, and now it does through the HDMI port. So they're always uh, making firmware updates, and they come out sometimes only a week or two apart. Uh, next to it, you have standard VTR controls. So uh, you can um, play back uh, on a monitor that you hook up via HDMI. Uh, you can fast forward and rewind, hit stop, of course, to stop recording. And now I'm recording as we, as we review the product, using the product. So I'm not going to hit the record button there, but you can see it lights up red when you're recording. Uh, the drive goes in here, and uh, the drives just snap in. They're really um, just, it, it feels nice. Um, it feels like an old tape player where you just stick the tape in and it clicks and lets you know that it's uh, in there. Um, on the back here, um, we have the HDMI in, and this is coming in from uh, my television studio switcher uh, power here. So we have it plugged in at the moment, but we don't need that. You can always unplug it if you wanted to go out of, uh, off, the, off the grid. Um, and it also has HDMI out. And this is important because not only can you play back what, you are re what you've recorded, uh, but you can also uh, take that uh, live feed that's coming in that it's recording and send it out to something else. So if you were doing a live stream, for example, you can record 
uh, the, the, the stream in full quality while you stream it. And that's a huge thing uh, to be able to do. So that's really helpful. Uh, these two connectors here are for SDI, which is another uh, video format. I'm uh, using a lot of consumer gear in my basement here, so I don't need to use all this high-end stuff. But if you have a camera and uh, equipment that supports SDI, it has SDI in and out as well, and a USB port to be able to update the firmware when uh, the time comes. So uh, that's a look at the front of the unit. And the big question is, how does it perform? Well, uh, you're, you're looking at the product of it. I've been using it all weekend, and it has been flawless, uh, mainly because I picked the right drives. And that's kind of an important thing to do. I'm not going to go through which drives are compatible and which aren't at the moment because solid state disk technology changes quite rapidly. But uh, if you go on um, Blackmagic's website, you can see uh, all of the uh, available um, disks that they've tested it with. I personally have tested it with the uh, other world computing. Uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, Mercury Extreme Pro 6G worked flawlessly. I have a, an Intel uh, 240 gig S SSD in there right now, which is uh, working just fine as well. Uh, also, SanDisk makes an extreme um, solid state disk that works very well as well. So uh, all those things seem to have been working for me. Now, one caveat is that it wants the drives to be Mac formatted, and they format the they want the drives formatted in the HFS Plus journaled format, which is what most Macs use. Uh, but if you're on Windows, you're going to need additional software to be able to read the files off of that disk, and there's instructions for that on the SanDisk website. But what I do like about it is that when you do plug the drive in, uh, there isn't um, you don't have to worry about it formatting or writing over what you already have. So what I've been doing is uh, just plugging the drive in, recording some video on it, and then taking the disk out. I uh, have a, um, a Thunderbolt uh, to uh, SATA connector that I plug the drive into, dump it right into Final Cut Pro, and I can pull in those files and start editing. Uh, I just name numbers them sequentially like you'd see on a, uh, on a digital camera, a video camera, and it puts it right on the root directory of the, of the disk. So uh, it's very easy to find. It's very non-destructive, so you don't have to worry about your disks getting erased. Um, but it does chew up a lot of disk space very quickly. Uh, depending on the format you're using and what frame rate you're at and how much motion's in the video, it varies wildly. But uh, you can probably fit about, in, in ProRes mode, which I'm using at 1080 uh, with at uh, 29 frames per second, um, with drop frame, you know, the whole routine, um, you can probably fit about an hour or so on the 240 gig drive. But if you're doing a higher resolution stuff like 1080p, you're going to get less. So um, you might want to stock up on a couple of these things. Um, another thing you can do is get a big, inexpensive uh, three terabyte drive and just dump uh, things off the SSD as you're shooting. So uh, just be ready for, for rather large file sizes. But it's been a really uh, helpful addition to my home uh, podcasting studio here, and uh, I'm really happy with it. So uh, that is the Blackmagic Design uh, Hyper Shuttle 2, and it is available right now, and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. This is Lon Seidman. Thank you.